Hi everybody, in topic D of our uh, first module here, um, we've been talking about division um, by twos and threes, and we've been learning to look at that in a couple of different ways. So let's use some examples to help us understand it. We talked in class about a problem where students are sharing crackers, and I think it's a helpful one to understand this idea. In this problem, you have eight crackers. And I've drawn a tape diagram to help me represent it. Um, now, in the first iteration of this problem, we have two students sharing the crackers. So, on my tape diagram, I'm splitting it into two pieces. So, eight crackers between two students. And the question is, how many crackers does each student get? That's what we call the unknown in the problem. The unknown is the number of crackers each student gets. And to use some of the other language you've been using, we know our total, which is the eight crackers. We know the number of groups, which is two, but we don't know the size of the group. So how can I solve this? If I'm, I'm not sure, I can use a um, sort of mechanical method here to figure it out. I'm, because I'm splitting the eight crackers into two groups. What I can do is put one in each group until I get to eight. So you see I just spread, you know, I give one to one kid, one to the other kid. Here's another for that kid, and another for that kid, like so. I'm to four five, six, seven, eight. So that's it. And I see now that I have four in each group. So the unknown there was four crackers. Um, I can write this as a division sentence, which was is like this. It's eight divided into two groups. And in each group, there will be four. Okay, so let's look at a similar problem, but one that works out a little bit differently. In this problem, we have eight crackers again. Um, and the difference is that instead of sharing it between two friends, what we're doing is we are giving two crackers to each kid. And the question we're asking is, how many times can we do that? which I represent like this with my tape diagram. So I have eight crackers, that's my total, and I have two crackers in each group, but the question I'm asking is, how many groups can I make that are like that? Um, I know my total, I know my size of the group, but I don't know the number of groups. So let's back that up a second, and let's imagine what's happening here. We have eight crackers, I want to give two to each person, and the question is, how many people can I give the crackers to? So, I'm going to solve this by skip counting by two and adding on to my tape diagram until I get to eight. So I have two already. That's my first group. Four. Six. Eight. And I'm done. It's okay that my new tape diagram that I'm filling in there doesn't quite match up. That's going to happen. Um, to make it look nice, what I can do, is, and this is going to happen to you, and, and I don't want you to keep adding on there. We've already reached 8, so we stop. What you can do is just erase your original work like that and add on like so. See, I made my tape diagram fit the math problem. I didn't let the tape diagram run my math problem for me. My brain is in charge, okay? So let's, let's count again just to make sure. Count with me. Two, four, six, eight. Eight crackers. Now, how many times was I able to do that? One, two, three, four. So I was able to do that four times. And I'm going to write that again as a division sentence. I have a total of eight. And I'm dividing it. This time, instead of dividing it into a number of groups, I was dividing it into a certain size of group. And it's still division, 
um, works basically the same way. So I have 8 divided into groups of 2. And I was able to then find that there were 4 groups like that. Now, if we look back, do you see that we actually have the same division sentence, but a different tape diagram? Um, that's not a coincidence. There's two different ways to think about division, but they both work the same way in the end. Let's do an example problem to show that that's true. Um, this time, the problem we're going to look at is 12 divided by 2. Now, uh, on some scratch paper or something, what I'd like you to do is see if you can draw one or both of the tape diagrams that would help you solve this problem. Um, so, you know the drill. Pause it, see if you can do that, and come back and join me. Okay. Well, let's solve it together now. So, first, let's do 12 divided by 2, where the 2 is the number of groups. So, this is like the problem where we're sharing between two people. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a tape diagram for that. And the total is 12, and the number of groups is 2. You see how I have two boxes there in my tape diagram? And again, if I'm not sure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, items to my tape diagram, putting one in each box until I have 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I couldn't fit those all in a nice column. That's okay. Um, I understand because they're in the box that they're one group. Um, it'd be better if I could have fit them all in, but I'm not going to stress that too much. Um, this is a tool for helping me solve it. It has to serve me in that way. So, how many are in each group? If I count carefully, I see that there are six in each group. So, using this model, I have found that the size of the group is six. It's really important to note when I'm doing this kind of problem that I put one in each box instead of putting multiple in one box as I went along. Um, I can get myself in trouble that way. All right, so the, now let's look at the other method. This one I'm going to draw just my little box, and there's two in there. And my total is 12, but I don't know how many Uh, twos I can fit into 12 yet. I don't know how many groups I can make that are just like that. So again, follow along with me. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So what I did there is I skipped counting by twos. I moved a little fast at the beginning here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. It's always good to double check your work in that. And again, I'm going to just fix my tape diagram. Sometimes I might have the other problem where I make my tape diagram too small and I just need to extend it. That's okay too. And I have six groups. This doesn't just work with twos, it can work with any number. Okay, I've drawn two tape diagrams here. They both represent the same division problem. Can you figure out what it is? These tape diagrams are both representing 12 divided by 3. Um, and we just have the two different interpretations. So let's zoom in on one of them. And let's take a look at this one here. Here we have a total of 12. I see three groups, but I don't know how many are in each. Let's put one in each until we get to 12. So that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Very nice. Now how many are in each group? 1, 2, 3, 4. So the size of my group is 4. Let's take a look at the other one. Here I have 
a total of 12. I have a group size of 3, but I don't know how many groups like that I can make. So let's try it together. I start off by counting that first 3, so that's 3, 6, 9, 12. So how many groups did I make? 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 groups of 3 make 12. Notice how they both have the same answer. The answer in the division problem is called a quotient. So the quotient in 12 divided by 3 is 4. Whether it's looking at an unknown where the unknown is the size of the group, or if it's the number of groups. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Uh, please let me know if you have any other questions about this.